Hello everybody. Curriculum for young children. Under this, today we are going to deal with the topic Early Childhood Education Curriculum Framework. The objective of this lesson is to understand the curriculum framework for early childhood education and to understand the quality of the curriculum. As we all know that first 6 to 8 years of the life of the child is very important and critical in the stage of human beings. It is a stage where the developmental is extremely rapid than any other period of the human development. In the field of neuroscience also particularly on the brain has provided a convincing evidence that these periods or the critical periods located with the early years of the life. And the development of the brain is potential during these years. The research also indicates that if these early years are not supported by in a stimulating enriching physical and psychological environment, the enhancement of the child's brain developing to its full potential is a question. This stage in the life is also an important as foundation for inclusion of social values and personal habits which are known to last for a lifetime. What follows logically is the crucial importance in investing these early years to ensure an enabling environment for every child and thereby sound foundation for his life which is not only the right of every child but which is also has impact on the long term on the quality of human capital available to the country. Even the Millennium Developmental Goals also focuses on the importance of the health, nutrition and education of the young children. The research around the world has shown that in order to maximize the impact, the planning and provision of early childhood and the primary education programs needs to be taken into account the three important principles of child development that is the child's development is a continuous and cumulative process. So, what precedes influences what follows. In terms of programmatic intervention, so it is important to address the entire child continuum from the prenatal stage to the end of primary stage as opposed to the intervening stages of only one substage exclusively. The health, nutrition and education for the psychosocial development are all interrelated. So, care to be taken in addressing the importance of all the needs of the children through holistic approach. The child's development will be optimized only if the program addresses the child's overall development. Curriculum. What is a good curriculum? A good curriculum should cover all the things designed to help the children's learning and development. This calls for the child centered approach that empowers the child and makes an active participant in the learning process. In India, the contextual diversities should be an important consideration providing the curriculum flexibility. Thus, the curriculum should help to evolve an environment that is conducive for sociality, provide linguistic richness and engages the children mentally, physically amid of safety and gratification. The importance of this period in the life is that it is a critical period in the life of human beings which we have already understood and the need for the curriculum providing the sound and holistic growth and development of the child is been established fact. So, what kind of curriculum can contribute to such development? There are certain principles or guidelines are to be followed while framing the curriculum for providing the sum total experiences available to the child and it cannot be reduced to a syllabus. 
it has to be constructed to suit the children's requirement in different context and should be in tune with the child's age, the needs and abilities of the child. It requires the full involvement of the teacher both in building of it and in transacting it in the classroom. It is equally important to see that the curriculum should be not only a drab meaningless and often a cruel schedule that passes for the preschool education, but it should be a appropriate method. The child's natural desire to learn and what is being done at the end should be the development in the child. The child's urges to learn more and more and also building the child's self-confidence, self-worth, but should not lead to poor academic performance, dropping out at later stages. Many of the practices encountered at this stage are not only boring and meaningless routines for the child, but it can be even damaging and dangerous. So, importance should be given while a curriculum is designed or framed. Now, we will see the pedagogical processes. The general objectives of early childhood education can be described as laying foundation for a healthy, productive, satisfying life in future by enabling the child to develop his or her maximum potential, preparing the child for entry and success in primary school, providing support services to women and girls to enable them to enter and continue with the education, training and being a part of the workforce of early childhood education. To achieve these objectives, the curriculum should be developmentally appropriate, activity based and related to the child's needs, interest, abilities and age. An integrated set of experiences to foster the holistic growth and development in all domains such as the health and well-being, the cognitive, physical, social, emotional and language development through an interlinked approach should be followed in curriculum. The curriculum should be flexible enough to suit the diverse social, cultural, economic, linguistic context of our country as well as adaptable enough to suit the individual differences among the children. The curriculum should be able to help the child to adjust to the routines of primary school as well as the demands of the more formal teaching. From the earliest times, thinkers have speculated about the nature of the child and the process of socialization. Plato's ideas are that the young children should be guided in the state-run schools, whereas radical and unacceptable in his time. As a centuries later, Gandhiji's ideas about the craft-based education were contemporaries. Western thinkers like Rousseau, Frobel, Dewey, Montessori and others have been pioneers in the movement of early childhood education. Their ideas have opened the way for sensorial and practical activities forming the curricular content. Their insights into the importance of play, art, rhythm, rhyme, movement, active participation led to the inclusion of these elements in classroom dynamics. Indian thinkers have also been guided by their observation concerning the young children and their findings about the children's interest in activities using different materials. Gandhi, Tagore, Tarabai Modak were the first Indians to conceptualize a child-centered approach to the care and education of young children in India. More recent times, the scholars in developmental psychology and child development like the Piaget, Brunner, Vygotsky have further emphasized based on research that play and activity are the child's most natural modes of learning. Based on the insights and philosophies of these practitioners and thinkers, we know that the 
early childhood education curriculum programs should be based on the understanding of the patterns of learning that define the essential nature of the child. The early childhood education teacher must be equipped with an understanding of the principles. The basic principles are play as the basis of learning, art as a basis of education, recognition of special futures of the children's thinking, the blending of the textual that is the basic literacy and numeracy and the cultural programs, mix of formal and informal interactions, primacy of experiences rather than expertise, developmentally appropriate practice and flexibility, the use of local materials, arts and knowledge, integration of health and well-being based on the healthy habits. So, the teacher should understand these basic principles of learning in that takes place in the child and should give importance to the domains of development. What are the developmental domains? They are the motor domain, the sensory domain, the cognitive domain, the language domain, the emotional and social personal domains. The development of various skills within each domain should be a continuous process. The domains of development are all interrelated. The children's learning does not occur in isolation or in narrow but it is interlinked and the subject areas like development and learning are integrated. Any activity that stimulates one dimension also affects the other dimension. For example, storytelling in a classroom. The three years old will listen to very short stories and their interest can be retained with the use of puppets accompanying of the play of words and rhymes. The narration of the story will help the children to understand the sequence, explore their own emotions and focus on the language. By inculcating the skill of listening in the children, the teacher will help them to gain competence even in expanding their vocabulary and widening their cognitive range. At the level of developing of the fine motor skills, Jessel's norms describe the children's changing competences. For example, a 3 year old can copy a circle or a straight line, a 4 year old can copy a cross, a 5 year old can copy a diamond or triangle or even a prism. Based on this understanding, the children can be engaged in pattern drawing, an activity that promotes the readiness for writing. The national curriculum framework of 2005, it has strongly articulated the need for substantial improvement in the quality of education. The SSA, the Sarva Siksha Abhyan also emphasizes the significance of quality education and suggests various parameters to be addressed in the state and district plans to achieve the desired goal. The quality dimension for elementary education can be identified as the basic infrastructure facilities and other facilities, the management and community support, the school and classroom environment, the curriculum and teaching learning material, the teacher and the teacher preparation, opportunity for the teacher learning time, the classroom practices the learner's assessment, monitoring and supervision. In order to be continuously informed about the parameters and issues related to the quality dimensions, the elementary education both at the classroom level as well as at the systematic functional level, some monitoring system should be put up in the place. A strong need was felt for periodic monitoring and regular feedback at the elementary level within and outside the classrooms. The Sarva Siksha Abhyan emphasizes a holistic and comprehensive approach and suggests a community based monitoring system which also encourages developing partnership between the communities and the research institutions for effective monitoring. In 
Sarvasiksha Abhyan monitoring is a broader sense has been defined as a continuous assessment of the progress, diagnosis of the strengths and weaknesses and provision of remedial and corrective measures. Therefore, a continuous comprehensive monitoring and subsequent learning forms one of the own experiences is crucial for implementation of the planning and programs. The main indicators of quality of elementary education can be visualized in terms of the preparation, the classroom processes, the learner's achievement. Now, we will see the quality in the physical environment. The physical environment comprises the environment inside and outside the early childhood education facility. The key characteristics of physical environment of an educational setting are the location, the accessibility, safety, flexibility, the scale and visibility. The role of physical environment to support the activities and the needs of the users. The building should be enable the teachers and the caregivers to carry out their work with a little stress placed on them by the environment as possible. Implications on policy level are related to the spacing standards, maintenance and the use of facilities outside the school hours. The second important quality dimension is the teaching and learning process. What is teaching and learning process? The teaching learning process is the heart of the early childhood education services. It includes everything that goes on in the classroom but refers mainly to the interactions between the teacher and students and their environment. The teaching learning process can also be called as a classroom interactions. It can be classified into three domains, the emotional support, the classroom organization and the instructional support. The setting indicators for the quality of teaching and learning process is more challenging then measuring the learning outcomes as ultimately much demands are on the values and the beliefs regarding the educational purpose and the upbringing of the children. It is however exactly the task that the school inspectors and other supervision services perform for national governments. How this teaching and learning process are evaluated, monitored in schools and support of the inspection services include the development of the quality indicators, it must be a central concern of any effort to ensure that all children are receiving meaningful basic education. Early childhood education research underlines that essential to pedagogical approaches that include a positive socio-emotional climate emotionally safe and stable relationship with a sensitive responsive teachers. Monitoring the pedagogy and teaching learning process. The proposed measures tools to monitor the quality of early childhood education classroom contexts and the pedagogical processes were selected according to some criteria. That is the measure they used in early childhood education and care setting the access to the quality of settings for children in the age group of 3 to 6 years and the focus should be on the teaching learning process. Most of these measures are looking specially at the language development, the communication and this is an important parameter in child development especially for the young children coming from disadvantaged communities. Measure can be obtained for use at low cost or free of charge material. The purpose of measure is a program improvement, monitoring and evidence based policy development. Measures that are not only for research and evaluation are also not included. Measures may be applied by the educators themselves with minimum training or by external observer who receives a high training. The target users are mainly the educators of early childhood education programs. So, the local monitoring, personnel and policy makers can be considered. So, this is the quality dimension in early childhood education and curriculum.
The curriculum in early childhood education centers should outline a clear goals across a range of developmental areas to which the educators and children can aspire. For instance, the five goals proposed by the National Educational Goal Panel in 1997 that were meant to be treated and pursued equally. These goals are the physical and healthy development, emotional well-being and social competence, positive approaches to learning, communication skills and cognition and general knowledge. Parent and community participation. Parental involvement is linked to the children's school readiness. Research shows that a greater parent involvement in the children's learning positively affects the child's school performance, including higher academic achievement. Parent involvement in early learning has also been shown to increase the parental involvement in primary and post-primary school. This is the main reason for involving the parents and the community in early childhood education services are to establish a better understanding of the children by educators and promoting among the parents and community appropriate education practices, attitudes and behavior towards children. And the another important is providing parent and the staff with information to referral of other services. And the most important aspect is supporting for better parenting. Now, we will define the quality participation. There is no universal agreement on what parental involvement is as the concept of participation varies widely by context. However, there are two broad strands. One is the parents involvement in the life of the school and the other is their involvement in support of the individual child at home and at school. The exact characteristics of the quality parental involvement in early learning process may must be defined according to the context. However, some examples of international literature includes the stimulating and supporting children's learning. Some examples of quality involvement may be reading with the children, promoting for the children for sounds, numerical concepts and other academic concepts in the home and making learning material available at home and taking interest in the child's time at school. Some other examples for the quality involvement of the parent participation in early childhood education programs is that the parents are invited to take part in the school events to provide and receive regular feedback to the teachers on their child's performance in the class. The quality standards are being framed for early childhood education centers across all the sectors. These are applicable that catering for the early childhood education services the children in the age group of 0 to 6 years with initial focus on establishing standards for early childhood education centers for 2 to 6 years old. The service for 2 to 3 years old will be offered by the crutches. With the Right to Education Act, the services for the children in the age group of 3 to 6 years would overlap with the primary education. Therefore, early primary education will also need to be considered the guidelines in the document. The quality standards adhere to the philosophy of integrated approach for the holistic child development of which the education or early stimulation should be an integral part. The present framework is set in the context of National Early Childhood Care and Education Policy and the National Curriculum Framework for Early Childhood Education. It is informed by the National Curriculum Framework Position Paper of 2005 and other national and international work on developing minimum specifications and quality standards in early childhood education. This quality criteria states up front the negotiable and non-negotiable must be available to all children attending any kind of early childhood education provisions. 
one classroom should measure up to 35 square meters for a group of 30 children and the availability of 30 square meters for outdoor space for a group of 30 children. The building should be structurally safe and with an easy approach with clean portable water should be available. Immediate health services in terms of first aid or medical should be available. Adequate training staff should be appointed. There should be a provision for adequate developmentally appropriate learning materials. Space should be allocated for cooking meals and nap time for children. Indicators of quality staff include the knowledge of child development and professionalism, how to plan developmentally appropriate programs and positive appreciative attitude towards children. The indicators of quality of the family or community perspective include the services open to every child and generally accessible in terms of transportation, friendly and supportive teaching and management staff, the staff that are objective and non-judgmental. The indicators of effectiveness include evaluation used for continuous improvement, goals become the guidelines for evaluation comprehensive goals to be used, evaluation use valid designs. The need and importance of evaluation. What is the need for evaluation? Evaluation is required to check the effectiveness and quality of the program, to check to what extent the desired objectives are achieved, to identify the highlights and drawbacks of the program and to measure the program in terms of quality, cost, benefit of program process. So, today we try to understand the curriculum framework for early childhood education. We try to understand what is the importance of good curriculum and what are the basic principles that should be taken in, into account while framing the curriculum for early childhood education. And also we try to understand the developmental theorists, thinkers and educators guidelines on the early childhood education curriculum framework. We also understood what is the quality dimension in the curriculum framework and the importance of the parent involvement in early childhood education programs. Hope you have understood this lesson. Thank you.